so here is the poem. Right. Um, I'm now going to try and imagine what the problems are. Let's start by counting the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'm imagining that maybe the structure of the poem was problem number one. So, 14 lines. What do we call, and I know this is a foul poem, but home language students, please don't say, okay, I can pack my notebooks away, because you've also got this kind of poem in your syllabus. So, home language students, keep there. Foul students, 14 lines, we call it a sonnet. Then what should I do? I should look at my rhyme scheme. I've got spring. Now, when you do a rhyme scheme, use the alphabet and start with A. What rhymes with spring? Ring, sing, fling. Okay, anything else? Joy, beginning, sinning, boy, winning. I wouldn't go with beginning, sinning, winning because they've got two syllables. So let's just go with those. Now we go to B. We've got, sorry, that's meant to be A. What am I thinking of? A, 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 right. Now B. Lush and thrush and brush and rush. Right. Now we go to C. Joy and cloy and boy and beginning and sinning and winning. So, what have we got? We've got A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D, C, D. Can you see that these lines are linked by the rhyme scheme and these lines are linked by the rhyme scheme? Count the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have an octave. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have a sestet. A poem that is divided into an octave and a sestet with the octave going A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A is a answer. Petrarchan sonnet. Now, what do we normally expect? What is the convention of the Petrarchan sonnet? One of the grade 11s asked me about the convention of the soliloquy. What is the convention of the Petrarchan sonnet? The convention is like the rules. But remember, can you break the rules? Think football. Of course you can. Right, octave. In the octave, you normally have a problem. And in the sestet, you normally have a solution. So let us look at, do we have a problem in the octave and a solution in the sestet? No. So he is following some of the conventions, but not the others. So what is the octave about? Very simple. Nothing is so beautiful as spring. And then everything in that octave is telling us how beautiful spring is. So octave is that spring is the most beautiful season and it provides all the evidence. Now if the couple of problems were in some of those lines, please won't you send me another message and I can look at that next time. Now we come to the sestet and he asks a question. He says, what is all this juice and all this joy? That is the juice and the joy of spring. And he says, you know what it is? 
It is a strain, a, a bit of Eden. So when we get to spring, we see what Eden was like. That's what he's saying in the sestet. And then he links it from spring, the season, to girls and boys. So he says spring is a time of juice and joy and innocence and sweetness. And he says, you know, that's what it is in boys and girls, in young people, in you guys. And he, he prays. He prays to God, to Christ. And he says, please, Christ, keep young people full of juice and joy and sweetness and innocence. Don't let them sin and become clouded and soured. Keep them sweet. Okay, so your octave, description of spring, the season. Sestet, a link from the season in the world, in nature, to the season in young people. When young people are fresh and enthusiastic and sweet and full of joy. And he prays to Christ, please, please don't let that be spoiled with sin. Please keep that attitude in their minds. So the octave, the season, the sestet, linking to human beings, young people, and a prayer to God to maintain spring in young people.